everybody. Welcome back to Vanguard 101 Team Out Solution. I'm Ryan Dumaria Griffin, and I'm here to tell you about attack implications. Yay! Hey guys, new t shirt. Class of Lesson. Yay! Thank you, Peanut Gallery. Now, I'm going to start on the basics with attack order. This is something that's pretty important in a game in which your primary mechanic is how you attack and, you know, what you do when you attack and what skills go off when you place things on the board and then attack with them. So considering attack is, you know, about a fourth of your turn at any given time that's not drawing, standing, or writing, then we're going to talk about this. So the absolute basics. Uh -huh, you, see, you see what I did there with the, with the absolute real quick. There we go. There's a T in there. Okay. So we got the absolute basics of attacking are what triggers you're playing. Now if you're playing the good triggers, the yellow ones, not the blue ones. You're playing the yellow ones. Pretty much just need to go Vanguard first. Most advantage, all of your triggers alive. Unless you're already killing your opponent, in which case your kill triggers aren't alive, but that's beside the point. You get criticals, vanguard first, you're pretty self-explanatory, you don't want to swing your rearguards first, then then your vanguard, and then your opponent, like, stops your vanguard, no passes you, two passes you, perfect guards you, where are you going to put the extra power? Where? Where indeed? You're not. You don't, you don't get anything. So you should take vanguard first whenever you're playing criticals, just so you have somewhere else to put the power. Sure, you can go like we're gonna we're gonna down here. We're gonna say okay, we've got we got rear guard, vanguard, rear guard is usually how the board is set up. And so when we're playing when we're playing criticals and only criticals, eight, twelve, some some value in there. Usually you want to go vanguard, you know, rear guard, rear guard. Not in that any particular order, but you do have another option, and this kind of gets into the later lesson on implications of, you know, when you should attack what with what. But you know, they got an annoying little dude. Like, let's say you've got a, let's say this is your board, and you've got this dude, and they've got a rear guard here, and you go, okay, I'll just you know swing at your interceptor. So when we had special interceptors, those were a thing. Yeah, you usually want to knock that out first, and then you've got your vanguard attack, so you can still put your criticals over here. And you still got a full line. So, that's kind of it. But you never want to attack with both rear guards first. That's a no-no. Don't do that. Now, if you're playing stands or rainbows, as you know, you're playing both critical stand draws and heals. Professor Griffin? Yes. Why would you play stands? Why indeed? Well, now, they used to be okay. But now, you just, you, you don't need them. And the, one of the problems with stands from the get-go, from the get-go, was unless your deck did something specific to assist stand triggers in particular, there just really wasn't a reason to play them. I mean, sure, a damage is a damage no matter how small. And that was, that was the tagline for the Ashura Azure Dragon deck. That was super cool because in a game, in a state dead of a meta, dominated by decks that just like tried to put it all on the vanguard and you know swing in you could just go uh, I swing with my vanguard I'm playing a Shura Kaiser and they're like perfect guard and they're like that doesn't matter stand trigger and you're still taking the damage anyway so that was the tagline of that deck but now that we have you know giant dudes that you know standing multiple times is cool when you can do it yourself that's that's really it you're either restanding your vanguard and stand triggers don't help you but criticals do or you're standing your rear guards and you don't need stands for that, because you already did it. And normally they have effects that say, like, this can only stand once per turn, or this isn't as useful because of the attack order. So I'll show you, like, a classic example of, like, Aqua Force, things that need to stand, but why you shouldn't play stand triggers. I'll do that later. So, in stands and rainbows, generally you wanted to go rear guards first, and then vanguard. That's pure stands, because you don't get any advantage if you if you don't have rear guards to stand. Another reason stands aren't that great is if you happen to find yourself at a junction where you can't stand anything, you're upset, you wasted your trigger. Stands just had more problems, you know, innately than criticals did. Criticals help you win the game, stands do that too, they're just 
much more inconvenient and inefficient at doing so. So if you're playing stands or rainbow triggers, you can either go rearguard, rearguard, vanguard, or rearguard, vanguard, rearguard. So you had somewhere to put like the draws and heals power, but you still got to use your stand triggers. It was just a lot more complicated, and it honestly wasn't, you know, that superb. I'm not saying that stands don't have their place. Hello, catch call. But uh, it's just not the preferred way we do things nowadays. Ask how many you know stands a Kagaru Gear Chronicle Royal Paladin Shadow Paladin player are playing, and they're gonna say zero. That's just it. You can try. You can try. That that's what I'm saying. Tell me how it works out. So you know whatever deck you're playing aside, that's the pretty general basics of how to attack in Vanguard. When you're playing your deck and you've got criticals, you know, Vanguard, Rearguard, Rearguard, you get the idea. But, when we get to something a little more techy options, shall we say, this is what happens when you've got to make your decisions. So, for... We're going to assume we're playing a deck that has eight criticals, four draws, and four heals. A standard trigger lineup, you know, by most decks, since the beginning of you know, Vanguard's time. If you had eight criticals, you played them. That, that was it. But when we get to the rest of your, okay, here's your opponent's board. They also have, you know, a, a full front line. So, here's where we get into what you're playing against, and when to attack something other than the Vanguard set. Normally you want to push in for damage. Sir? Yes, Braxton? Why would you want to attack something other than the Vanguard? Why indeed? Because they either need a certain amount of dudes to get their effects off, Diablo, Machining Destroyer, anything in Royal Paladins, especially Jewel Knights, uh, you know, even taking away advantage from Kagero, just removing their dudes was primarily the best way to kill them since the clan came out. You just, you know, took all the dudes away or you had more dudes than them. That was, that was really how you won against Kagero. But let's say that uh, this is a Silent Tom. This rear guard right here. Is that a problem for you? That's OTT's win con. You should remove that. Viciously. Viciously. You should, if say you don't have, we're, we're assuming that you don't have any retire effects. If you're playing Shadow Paladin, Dia, Blast, Dark Revenge, or Abyss, problem solved. No. It's only his grade ones. It's only his grade ones? My mistake. Seeker. You're playing Seekers, and you have, <laughs> you have BDS. You have BBS. And you're like, I can just remove that. Well, we're going to assume that you don't have any retire options. You have to actually attack it. So, times when you attack rear guards. This guy, this guy right here, is a problem. He is a, he, let's say, Silent Tom and, you know, problem rear guards. So, back in the day, special interceptors were, uh, were kind of a problem. Because you could, you could spend your, you know, 5k shield attack, assuming you had it, for 10k worth of shield. And that's a pretty good trade. You'll take that just based on the advantage it gives. Silent Tom is OTT's, you know, bread and butter. Giant win con. Uh, I'm trying to think of something else that's really good. Anything in Narukami's front line. Uh, any of Link Joker's dudes that do things on hit. Kill those things. Because even if your opponent has, like, very few cards in hand, killing a rear guard is generally, you know, pretty good when they can't replace it. So you're, you're basically wanting to take away your opponent's advantage when you attack their rear guards. That's why we retire things, that's why we retire some things over other things. That's why we're going to attack. However, the primary reason you're going to use an attack on a rear guard to start off with, maybe on your first attack, to either pop an interceptor, a problem rear guard, a silent tom, it's because this guy doesn't have a booster. This guy doesn't have a booster, he's 9k. This guy is your, your average utility 9k, he's your burnout, he's your neo flame, he's your, you know, sword me, he's your, and you didn't call something here for whatever reason, uh, he's your 9k. You're just gonna, not wanting to waste this guy, and you know, this is 11k because this is card fight vanguard, you're just gonna smack into this guy. You got nothing better to do. He's just sitting there, you still got this line to absorb your critical trigger power, you get your Vanguard attack here, and you got then you can decide, depending on what this is, assuming you killed this, if this is still here and they guarded it like they should have because it's Silent Tom, you can again decide if it's more advantageous to you to inflict the extra damage or just to murder that thing. I sometimes like this. 
So, you know, this is all based on assumption, but this is a pretty standard board in a situation you run into often. When you've got things like this, and your opponent's got a sound tom there, you kill it. But sometimes, you know, leaving dudes on the board isn't so bad. Opponent's like, not doing anything with them. They're not that great of rear guards. It's an 8k in the front line. Oh no, it's mana, he already got the thing. It's not hurting you. His line is poop. Why would you kill it and give him a better line? That's just not good for you. You always, basically, to attack in Vanguard, just always pick the option that is best for you. That's really all you gotta do. You don't want this guy to go to waste, and dropping 5k shield on this is just the same as attacking this. Why would you put the trigger over here if you got it, and you attack Vanguard first? Why don't you just do the same thing over here? He could just intercept with this guy, and now you're sad because you didn't kill Silent Tom. That's it. You just gotta get your advantage and prevent your pun from having his. You having a full board and, you know, attacking optimally at whatever time that is, it just takes practice and game sense. That's it. Kill that thing. Do as much damage as possible. Kill that thing. So all in all, kill Tom. Always kill Tom. He's just an example. But let's talk about when your opponent has something a little bit odd, or something that punishes you on your turn, which is not something that's very common in Vanguard, but it is in a lot of other games. It's mostly disruption effects. So for example, this new Kagura promo that, come, that came out says, when you guard with it, uh, retire one of their dudes. <laughs> for a cost. More or less. More or less. So, if you have your board, something that looks a little like this, because you don't play, I don't know, more cards, You've got this, and he has the Kagero dude in his hand. Well, then you got kind of got to decide when you want him to play it. If you you swing rear guard first, maybe he plays it, and you lose your other line. Only gets rested dudes. It only gets rested dudes. Only gets rested dudes. Oh, okay. So with that in mind, I apologize. You should always read your cards. You'll want to attack with your rear guards first, and make sure that... Actually, no, it's actually better to protect with the vanguard first, that way you can't hit anything. Yeah, yeah. So it's all about what the card says. So for example, if it only hits rest of dudes, that's probably what makes the card fair, go vanguard first, and then rear guard here, and rear guard here. And that way you get all of your attacks in. You want to make sure that you don't get screwed out of an attack. And you want to keep your dudes alive as long as possible. Sure, he's going to kill this dude anyway, but it's okay. You got your value. You got your value. You didn't go, you know, rear guard, rear guard, vanguard, and one, mess up your trigger power, and two, lose your dude because of the dude anyway. The, the promo. Mm -hmm. well, let's talk about Etan, the witch that says, I'm going to kill your dudes if you attack me. Now, are there any stipulations on that, Braxton? Um, they have to be, uh... They have to be standing. They have to be standing? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Alright, so with that in mind, we're gonna go Rigo Rigo first because it's actually worse for us if we do this. If we go Vanguard first and he says, well, I'm playing Etan, and you knew that, so now I'm gonna blow up things. Whereas, in this instance, the trigger power is less important than having your dudes on the board. Because you're talking about chance versus, you know, the definites that are already here. So, Try to play around what your opponent is doing, or and make sure you play your own, you don't play around yourself. Play your deck right. You know, it's not often that you're going to have to do something weird, like go rear guard, rear guard, vanguard. It's not very likely. It's just not. In the opening stages of the game, things are a little bit different. So let's talk about, you know, knowing how to attack in the late game is mostly about reading your cards and reading your opponent's cards. It's all very important, but you should probably know like how to attack with Sangard, for example. It's super easy. You're playing Shadow Paladins. This is an important point. You should go, you know, rear guard line, vanguard line, rear guard line, because you're playing Shadow Paladins, you require the retire, you want to make sure you get all your attacks. Make sure you max out the number of attacks you get, and you have somewhere to put the trigger power. So you'll figure this out pretty quickly depending on what deck you're playing, if you ever watch any games that we're doing. For example, it's like a Shadow Paladin you know, game here, so you can kind of see how the Retire like, line works. 
It's never a super bad thing to go rear guard, vanguard, rear guard. It's just some decks are better at going vanguard, rear guard, rear guard. Some are. But getting into the beginning of the game, the early stages, when is it better to rush my opponent or stop an opponent's rush or kill his important dude or just put everything on the board? It, again, it mostly depends on what you're playing, but let's say, for example, I'm playing Aqua Force, because I do play Aqua Force. So I've got my Vanguard, my Title Assault, and my Marius. And he's got a Vanguard and a Rearguard. So, I have some options. I can either, and we're both a grade 2. This is 9k. So I've got some options. I can either use my Title Assault to kill this. Well, what is this? Is it Silent Tom? I don't know why it's there, but it could be. Do I want to draw a card with Mario's? If I do, that means I have to go Title Assault to Vanguard, and then Weenie Attack, and then Vanguard to get that skill off. So which is more important to you? Which is the better option? If this is some super important, if you leave me on the field for more than a turn, I'll win the game, Rearguard, you should kill it. It's as simple as that. If you get an effect, let's say Title Assault said, uh, oh wait, let's say that, uh, let's say that he's got another rear guard in the back, and now this is Neoflame. Is it now better for you to get the one extra attack on the Vanguard in, or do I want to, you know, wipe this whole, this, this whole line out? That seems pretty good. That's more advantage. I pay a counter blast, and I, I end that man's life. Seems, that seems pretty good. Seems good, Professor Griffin. It just depends on how much advantage you can get in the early game. You know, early game advantage translates to late translates to late game advantage, and late game advantage means you win the game. So if you have any specific questions, you can always ask, put it in the comments below. I tried to cover, you know, the three main things, how to attack with different types of triggers, uh, what happens in the later stages of the game, how to play my deck, and play the attack order optimally, when to attack rearguards versus vanguards, and what we do in the early stages of the game. Let's say you want to rush your opponent. I'm going to cover this in a little more detail before we go. So, my opponent has... Let's say my opponent has just rushed me, and he put a bunch of grade 1s on the board. These are all... These are grade 1. And now I'm on grade 2. And I've got... I've got my grade 2 rear guards. i got two of them. Because I didn't draw the same cards as my opponent did. Or maybe I drew, like... Maybe this is a weird one. Doesn't actually matter. So, he's rushed me. I'm. I took two. I guarded one. Something like that. Is it better for me to counter rush him and put everything over here, or is it better for me to remove his dudes? Personally, if you ask me, I prefer removing his dudes. Greater ones are a lot harder to come by in, you know, most decks now. You need your boosters because you've all played games without boosters. It sucks. And so if they want to put their dudes on the board first and get your damage out of it, whatever. I can still hit a critical and catch up and kill both of those. But, here's an interesting point. While you're doing that, this is a question that often comes up. And I'm not trying to move away from this. This is really your preference. Do you think it's going to be more advantageous to you to, you know, put more damage on the board? Or remove his dudes? I like to remove dudes. That's why I played Gagro for so long. But here's an important point. Now, we're both a grade 2, and this is my board. Actually, this isn't my board. I don't have this guy. This guy's gone. <laughs> Let's say the board looks like this. This guy is optional. He could be here, or he could not be here. This is where the early stages of the game really, really come to a head. Because now you have an option. You can either take the bet that I'm going to get a trigger and I can put things over here, it's going to be harder for him to guard the second swing. So we're going, in this situation we're going 1-2 to the vanguard. Is it better for me to go this way, and if I hit the trigger, I get the advantage. If he hits the trigger, I lose the advantage. If this guy doesn't exist, what am I going to do? If he hits the trigger, I lost an attack. If I go first, maybe I get the damage, but it's easier for him to guard. These are the questions you have to ask. I'm not here to tell you there's a right answer in this situation. I mean, sure, if it looks like this, I can just go here, there's always an option. But what do I do? 
if we're both 9k here and I go grade 2 first, you know, and he has a trigger, what do I do with this guy? These are questions you gotta ask. I can't give you the right answer. Because, you know, there really isn't one. Sometimes you'll take the bet, you'll be a man, you'll go in, and you get your ass handed to you. And that's just how the game goes. There's no one right strategy in these situations. You may never see these. I highly doubt that. I'm pretty sure you're going to see these. Sometimes you just got to bet on it. It really seems like something to, crazy to say in a strategy video, but there's not always a right answer. You should play criticals. That's the right answer. Right there. Criticals! If you want to go boss to the wall and say, I'm going to get a critical off of this, oh, there we go. I'm going to deal three damage to my opponent. You can play risky. You can play conservatively and say, the rear guard first is the better choice. I usually take that option. Because I like the guarantee. But only two of my sign guards. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was the basics of attack order and attack implications when you get into the you know more niche, early stage stuff. Let me know if you have any more questions. Or anything you disagree with, feel free to put it in the comments. Anything you do agree with, feel free to put it in the comments. You just want to talk to me and tell me how nice this t-shirt looks. I love it. It's awesome. I just got it in the mail today. Uh, you know, talk to me. I want to hear. I want to hear from you. So, that was Tech Order. Bangor 101. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. And uh, have a good one. See you. Yay!